Hi guys, today I wanted to talk about Pro Writing Aid versus Grammarly. And this isn't so much a video about which one of these is a better tool because while they're similar, they're also very different in their approach. So I will talk about what I like and dislike about Grammarly and what I like and dislike about Pro Writing Aid. And I'll show you how I use both of these in my writing process for editing and spell checking and grammar checking and all those kinds of things. Now for my sample, I wanted to use the manuscript from my fourth novel. It's called Seed of Chaos and it's book four in the Paladin Chronicles. And I wanted to use this one because I haven't touched this manuscript in a long time, probably about six months, at least chapter one anyways. And it's in the state that I wrote it in. And this is going to be very rough. It's got you know, grammatical issues. It's got spelling issues. It's got a lot of other problems with it. So I wanted to approach it with the raw form. So you can kind of see how I use Grammarly to help through this process. Now, typically before doing this, I would actually do a lot of read-throughs on this prior to actually taking it into Grammarly, but I wanted to take it into Grammarly as it is written rather than go through that process just to show you the tool and kind of how it's going to work with the text and the kind of suggestions it's going to make. Now, I do have Grammarly installed on my machine here. And this is the plugin that you can get for Word. I don't typically use this when I'm writing novels. I'll use this when I'm writing uh, essays or I'm writing short form type work, which might be an email or something like that, because I don't really want to take everything over to the website. Now the Grammarly's website has a lot more features that are built into the website that you don't get with the plugin. So I like to use the website instead of the plugin when I'm working for my novels and doing uh, work on editing any kind of long form story, which would, might be a short story or a novel or some longer piece of work that might be a technical piece or something like that. But in any case, let's go in and look at Grammarly using chapter one as it's written. So I'm basically just going to copy and paste the text from Word into the website. So this is the dashboard for Grammarly. I have a premium subscription to this. So a lot of the features that are enabled with a premium subscription aren't going to be enabled for uh, the free tier. Now I'm going to just create a new document here and I'm going to paste in the content from my Word document. And I generally will use cut and paste rather than try to import it because it has a funky way of importing the styles and exporting the styles. I prefer just to you know, copy and paste one chapter at a time and work on it that way. It just seems to work better. Paste in the text and you have a new document. You set goals and these are basically the way that Grammarly is going to tune the rules for uh, what your editing goals are going to be. And so my audience is general. This is fiction. Uh, the, the formality is neutral. So it's not real formal writing. It's not informal writing. It, it's, it's a novel. It's something that's going to be kind of more in the middle. My domain is creative. And so I'm going to put that on creative writing and I want my tone to be uh, neutral as well. Now you could uh, use some other tones if that was the, the nature of your novel. And my intent is to tell a story because I'm telling fiction here, but these would be more for formal writing. If you were doing something like an essay or some kind of sales material, whatever it might be. So once you ever, ha once you have that set, you can hit done and your rules are set and you're ready to go. So once you have your goal set, the next thing to do is just start editing. Grammarly doesn't really have a lot of features beyond what you see here, but it's basically just your document plus all the suggestions it's finding. And then this is just a summary of the kinds of things that it's looking for. These right here are suggestions that it's going to find that it's pretty much certain are going to be things that you need to fix. So spelling errors and common mistakes and things like that, these are pretty much a slam dunk. So I'm going to accept all these. So the first one is a really nice feature of what Grammarly does a good job with, and that is looking at sentence level edits that you might want to make. So this is what it thinks of as a possibly wordy sentence. And what it's basically looking for is a bunch of glue words, such as prepositions and conjunctions. And it thinks about ways to edit this to make this more readable. So this sentence says he shivered in the night air. Um, and then I could probably just do this. A gust of wind uh, blew back against his hood and coat that were already soaked through. So, you know, that's a pretty good edit there. So these are just word suggestions that uh, it's making, but this is talking about something that is very uh, explicitly defined in this scene. So I'm just going to ignore that. Here's another one of those wordy sentences. Then it came into the village and passed several buildings with the lights already off for the e uh, and the windows are shuttered. So then it came into the village and passed several buildings. This is another place where I think that uh, grammar really shines. Sometimes it'll just 
change word order. And then this one, um, this is a good sentence right here. I like the, the revised version of this. It says, he says he turned and fixed his eyes at the door and kept his face to the ground. This one, it says he, he turned, fixed his eyes to the door and kept his face to the ground. I like their version better. So I'm going to take it. Okay. This is suggesting a rewrite after I changed it. You saw our figure coming up from behind the men as they continued to pound him. That's a good edit. I'm going to take their suggestion. So that is all the edits that this is making for Grammarly. So I just basically went through the document according to the list and just work with the edits that they were suggesting. So once I got done with that, I can now look at the, the summary report that it's giving here. And this is just the summary score basically of what this is looking at. It's going to show you the readability, uh, word length and the sentence length and the readability score. Um, the word length is small. So I'm using a lot of smaller words as 12 word sentences. And this is a readability score that it's using the flesh reading ease score. Um, Grammarly will give you a similar, uh, pro writing, will give you a similar report that will show you a lot of the reading level type metrics that you can use. This one, um, does tell you that too, right here in this gray or text right here it says this is simple and easy to read. And it's likely to be understand by someone with a sixth grade education or about a late age 11, which is. So that's basically what Grammarly does. I, I like this little app because it, of the line level edits that it gives you and the kind of rewording of sentences that it will offer you. There's a lot of other things that it didn't really pick up on here that pro writing aid will, but I really do like some of those line level edits that it does illustrate. And it doesn't uh, do a bad job of picking up a lot of the grammatical mistakes and spelling mistakes and a lot of those kind of usage mistakes that are common in writing. What I typically do when I'm done with Grammarly is I take it out of Grammarly and I put it back in my document. And then I work through every chapter in my document one chapter at a time using Grammarly. And then I will do the same thing using Pro Writing Aid. So I'm just going to take it right out of uh, Grammarly, go and go to Pro Writing Aid just to show you how I do this in that order. And the reason I'm going to do it in that order is because uh, I typically like to use uh, Pro Writing Aid after Grammarly because of some of the reports that Pro Writing Aid gives. And those reports are going to illustrate a lot of other common mistakes that aren't strictly related to things like grammar. And this is uh, the interface for pro writing aid. So I'm going to paste this document in and let's start editing this one. Again, this is going to pick up on its own rules engine. So it's going to find a bunch of stuff that Grammarly didn't pick up on. And that's, that's good. You actually kind of want both because uh, what Grammarly doesn't pick up on pro writing aid can definitely help in that respect too. So that's another reason I like to use both tools, not just one or the other. Um, so let's, let's work on the, the grammar here and, uh, let's go through this and I'm going to show you the tools that I like in this particular, uh, UI versus Grammarly. So the first thing I start with in pro writing aid is the grammar right here. So I'm going to go through this and edit using the grammar checker here. So it found 12 issues and three spelling issues. Um, let's see. Let's see what this is. So this one's a little clunky in the UI. You have to kind of highlight over this and click this uh, button. But so now I've gone, I've gone through all of those. Um, I, those were a lot of good edits there that it made. Uh, those are the grammar and spelling issues it's found. Next, I do the style editor. And uh, this is going to be looking for overuse of adverbs, uh, other kinds of things like that. So let's just work through this list right here and see what kind of suggestions it makes. Now, this is looking at... Um, passive voice. This is something that grammar really will pick up on, uh, but this one also picks up on a lot of passive voice. Um, passive voice isn't evil. Just don't overuse it. It's uh, one of those things that if you use it all the stinking time, your writing just sounds boring and dull. Uh, sometimes it just sounds awkward if you try not to use a uh, passive voice and your sentence structures kind of get weird. Okay. No hidden verbs. Hidden verbs is another thing that this one picks up on. It's an implicit verb that it might need to add. Now this is another feature right here. Typically in writing, uh, this is one thing that Grammarly does is not pick up on, but for writing it does a great job. It's finding all your L Y words. Typically you want to minimize these as much as you can. Now, again, like passive voice, there is a time and place for it, uh, but eliminate it to the point that you can. Here's another cool feature about for writing a, which I think it does a great job at is, uh, using, it's going to find monotony like this, like he, 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 Vinick, I could say the boy right here. 
And that's really going to make your writing sound better. If you use, overuse pro, uh, pronouns a lot, especially in a sequence like this, where you have a lot of, of words that are describing the, the character's actions, you tend to end up starting your sentence with the same pronoun over and over again. It's good to break that up. Uh, either by using the character's name or some description of the character. No emotion tell. Now, this is one of those things where you don't want to use, it's trying to detect whether you're, you're showing or telling. You don't want to tell, you want to show. So showing emotion is by describing the character's reaction to something, uh, their physical movements, how they, uh, their gestures, their face, uh, the intonation of their voice, all these kinds of things that will help uh, shape their emotional response rather than just saying he got angry. And you want to keep this, um, again, passive voice out of your, your work as much as possible because it makes your writing sound a lot more punchy. So that's the style editor. So I did the grammar, uh, the grammar editor. I did the style editor. Another one of these that I really like the, is this one right here. And this is overused words. Um, now this will highlight your crutch words. My crutch word is then. I use it all over the place and went. So uh, both of them show up in this list. Here's another uh, word that is picked up on. I'm using you know, words about thought or believe or thinking words. Uh, when your character is doing some introspection, this is probably not needed. So I could probably take out this. This must be it. Um, we're in the character's head because this is his POV. So that's, that's working on the words for thinking words. I'm going to use some of these feeling words. These are kind of ones you want to avoid because this is means that you're, you're going to be, uh, telling more than showing, uh, heard is another one of these things too. So let's, let's try to eliminate some of these so that it makes, um, shivered at the thought that's probably will. Um, and when you, when, when you heard someone coming up behind him. So when you're writing, avoiding, uh, sense words like heard, um, uh, from the POV of the character, actually you, you, so he went, walked to the square of the building when he heard someone come up from behind him, you generally want to replace this with when someone, uh, approached, uh, someone approached from out of the tavern and called to him. Um, yeah, so you, that invokes you know, some hearing because it's coming from behind when somebody approached from out of the tavern and called to him. So yeah, that's a, something we want to eliminate there. Let's get uh, another one was just heard. So another one of my crutch words is went, uh, this one is not, um, as bad as other ones I've had, but I use it quite a bit and he fell dark. Yeah. So clean that up quite a bit. And so I've gotten rid of a lot of the went, heard, went, feel, believe, these thinking words. So those are style edits that this uh, are overused words that uh, will help clean your writing up and make it sound better. A couple of other things that I, I will sometimes look at is looking at over here on more options. I'll look at the dialogue um, because dialogue is another important thing of uh, fiction. So with dialogue, this... Well, I'll show you the number of dialogue tags and you want to minimize the number of dialogue tags in your uh, writing to the degree possible. Of course, you're not going to be able to eliminate them, but, uh, if you can eliminate them, uh, to the degree possible, it actually makes your writing sound better by doing that, rearranging a few things, taking, uh, some of the dialogue tags out. It just makes your writing seem a little bit, uh, flow a little bit better. Now, sometimes it's, like I said, it's unavoidable to, uh, eliminate all of the, uh, dialogue tags, because if you have a lot of people that are in the conversation, it can kind of get confusing. But if it's a conversation between two people, it, it's usually just where responses back and forth to one another. So you can, uh, kind of leave them out like here, right? What would the barkeeper up here? So what will it be? The barkeeper asked, uh, so, okay, sounds good to me. You got it. And so it's a short conversation. It's just between, uh, Vinick and the barkeep here. Another one that I, I, I do like to look for is this one it's sensory uh it just shows you the the number of words that you have that indicate that the, the senses that engages are like sense sight words sound words touch words and taste words so these are the kinds of things that you want to have in your writing you want to invoke all the senses i don't have i have sight sound but i i touch and taste and but i don't have any um smell words so maybe i should include some of those but you want to engage all the senses not just try to 
uh, engage one or two of them, but try to make it so that all the senses are engaged whenever you're doing your writing. So, you know, four out of five is not too bad. It could be better though. Another one of these that I like to look for is cliches. This is a, a good thing to look at is it's avoiding, avoiding, uh, cliches in your writing, uh, to the extent possible. These are fine. This is, this is a cliche right here. None of your business. Um, it's probably okay in this case. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it in there. And those are the tools that I like to use, uh, in this mostly the style, the grammar, uh, the overused words. And then I will, uh, look at the dialogue tags to make sure that I am, uh, using things appropriately. And other things to look at homonym, uh, homonyms, words that sound the same. If you like road, uh, and road R O D E and R O A D, um, can be one of those things that you, uh, like I have a tendency to use them improperly. It's just a bad habit I have. And this is a good tool for picking up on that. So once you're done with the editing piece, just come over here and click on the style. And this will give you a report, basically a summary of all of the various things that the, that pro writing a looks at. And it's, it's quite a bit relative to even of something like Grammarly. So this tool is why I like to do this one after Grammarly, because it does give you more of a synoptic view of your writing based on a lot of the kind of things that it's doing uh, from statistical analysis of your work. So once you have that up, this is what the report looks like. You, you want your scores up here to be good, especially your grammar and spelling score. That's just proofreading stuff, uh, easy to fix kind of stuff. The style of stuff is going to be more uh, discretionary, depending on what it is, your uh, goals might be. And sometimes the suggestions it makes may or may not be good suggestions. So that that's going to be a little bit more of a sliding scale. The rest of this is kind of just reporting on the metrics of your work, the readability, uh, some of the passive voice, the rate of that. Um, now I try to eliminate passive voice because it makes your writing sound a lot more uh, punchy and a lot more action oriented. If you don't use passive voice, um, the other thing is, is making sure that you, you limit the number of dialogue tags and a couple other things like that. That just makes it the overall readability of this. So you can click through this, um, report and it'll give you some details of all this. The summary was, uh, all these various things, um, a sentence length readability, you know, this is, uh, the, uh, a good report to look at right here, just because this one is going to give you a comparison of what you, what you're looking at. So, um, uh, my document, uh, has a lot of conjunctions in it. Tolkien, which who, uh, I think I set that author cause I use, I write Epic fantasy compared to his, uh, he has a lot of conjunctions and I have very few. So don't know if that's good or bad, but, uh, you get the point ING words or your words that end in ING typically used to describe some kind of ongoing action. Uh, this is uh, something I don't really do a lot of pacing. This says it's slow pacing, you know, you could, uh, look at that. So the, uh, slow pacing is just basically where, uh, your work might be, uh, a little bit monotonous in the reading. So that's something that you can, uh, work on. Um, consistency is quote consistency is just looking for, you know, uh, curly uh, quotes versus uh, single quotes and that kind of thing. Um, sticky sentences is, uh, basically looking for glue words and that's like prepositions and conjunctions. Again, I tend to use a lot of glue words in mind. So something that you could definitely work on and then dialogue tags, you can remove dialogue tags to the extent possible. So I, I try to, I try to get rid of them uh, as much as I can. And of course, you know, that's generally what you kind of want to do, um, in general, because the dialogue tags, uh, kind of can break up the conversations in your, a dialogue inside of your work. So again, a very useful report, uh, you know, you'll kind of get a feel for what your weaknesses and strengths are going to be. So as you work through this a lot more, you're going to get a lot more proficient at doing this rather than taking so long to do a single chapter. You'll know what your weaknesses are because you'll start to see the patterns. You'll start to see things like, Oh, I overuse when, uh, or went or then, which are my two crutch words that I use all the stinking time. And I'm going to look for that. And over time, as you write more, you will be more cognizantly aware of that when you're actually writing so you can eliminate it there. So it does help improve your writing overall. So we just look at pro writing aid and we looked at Grammarly and I, like I said, don't really use these as one versus the other. Rather, I use them together to edit my documents whenever I'm writing. 
So I think they have different strengths and weaknesses, and that's why I don't use one versus the other, but rather use both. So Grammarly, I think it does a fantastic job at the mechanical type issues. That's you know your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation, and it helps smooth a lot of that out. But the one feature I think that Grammarly has that really shines with is the one that I kind of market, and that's its ability to kind of look at your sentence structure and suggest different ways to structure your sentence. Uh, if it's too long, it might break it up into multiple sentences. If it's uh, too wordy, it can suggest ways to kind of make it shorter or it says, hey, this is a wordy sentence. Maybe you should revise it. It does a lot of good things around line editing. And that's really where I think Grammarly shines. Now, of course, it's got weaknesses. I think its biggest weakness is that it lacks a lot of the features that Pro Writing Aid has. And you end up paying more for Grammarly and you get fewer features for it. So that is one of those things that you kind of have to consider when you're going to buy these or if you're going to pay for the premium versions of these, which I do pay for the premium versions of these because I use them quite a bit. Now, Pro Writing Aid, of course, it has its grammar checker, which is good. Uh, but the, the thing that I think it really shines at is its style edits, its uh, overused word feature, its dialogue feature, and its sensory word feature. Uh, all these things, when you're writing fiction, are very important to really consider uh, because it does help make your writing sound a lot cleaner and a lot more uh, well thought out and a lot more edited. So once you use all those features, to me, that makes pro writing a worth its weight in gold. For me, the biggest feature that I love about pro writing aid is the overused word feature because I have a tendency to use crutch words like crazy and it also has the ability to kind of pick up on a lot of those kind of words that are more telling words and not showing words so the combined effect of what that does with Grammarly gives you a really polished document once you run it through the software having said that though don't rely exclusively on Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid to do your editing. They're not for that. They do a great job of doing a, a lot of things for you, but they are not a replacement for a set of human eyes on the document. The, the technology has definitely improved over the years, but they haven't been able to replace a person when it comes to editing a document. So whenever I'm doing my editing process, I do use these tools. I will actually do a read through of my document prior to ever taking it into Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid to do edits before. And then once I've gone through Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid both, I will then go back and do more editing using a more manual approach. And that way I'm going to pick up on some of the things that Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid may have introduced that made the document not read as well as before. And it helps kind of smooth out some of that stuff. So again, use the human element definitely wanted to edit it with your own set of eyes and second set of eyes or a third set of eyes if you so choose and get other people to look at your work but definitely use the software i think the software is worth its weight in gold and will help you expedite your editing process and will also help take some of the monotony out of just doing proofreading and things like that. So like I said, I think you can definitely benefit from both these tools. I think they're both worth buying and hopefully this will give you an idea of what they do and how you can use them in your own writing projects.